Happy New Year from our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, offering precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Ring in the new year with the right tools for the job. Join over 2 million men who trust Manscaped for their below-the-waist grooming. Step into the new year with Manscaped and a New Year's resolution that you'll actually want to keep. The Perfect Package 3.0 is the below-the-waist grooming package you need to start the year off strong. The Lawnmower 3.0's waterproof and skin safe trimmer will reduce nicks and discomfort and features a light to shine bright as we head into the new year. Manscaped even threw in ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner spray, as well as a travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably. Speaking of comfort, the Manscaped anti chafing boxer briefs are also included and will bring your underwear game to the next level. Bring sexy back in 2021 thanks to Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Welcome to the Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast with your host, two-time defending ATV motocross national champion, Cody Jensen. Am I on air? What's up, everybody? We're back. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, and welcome to another fun episode, episode number 42 of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CST Tires, available for purchase at shop.csttires.com. My girl, Brooke Catherine, is our featured guest tonight. You'll remember her from a previous episode or two, and you hear her voice on every episode doing some of our ad reads. You can expect to do some grinning and laughing during this one. We start off by talking about our summer spent at the racetrack, but then get into more broad ATV motocross topics, 2021 pro class predictions, and so much more that you're surely not going to want to miss. Thanks to our sponsors who are all on board with us tonight. CST Tires, go to shop.csttires.com, Yamaha, big time thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, the Decker Training Facility, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Forworks Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Roman Health, Factory 43, and Bike Strikes and Quads, LLC. Support these great companies that support us, and for all the products that fall through the Tracks, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website to help us out. No matter what off-road gear or parts you need, Rocky Mountain ATVMC has you covered. So before you buy, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website to help us out. Now, the 30-second board is up, it's sideways, and the gate is down. Time to dig deep. Let's go. All right, guys, I'm super pumped for another fun conversation here. It's been a minute, but back by popular demand, brought to you by Manscaped and their Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping by using code DIGGINGDEEP20 at checkout. It's my better half and partner in crime, Brooke Catherine. What's up, honey? Thanks for agreeing to come back on the pod here. Yeah, of course. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to be back. I'm glad you wanted me to come back. <laughs> well, I'm excited to do this. It's been, uh, it's been nearly a year since we, you know, had, uh, had you on last and, uh, this time a year ago, digging deep was still pretty new. So I didn't know how the episode was going to be received necessarily. Um, but people loved it. Listener numbers were good, of course, but, uh, we got compliments all summer long about it. I feel like about this particular episode and, you know, bringing on a woman's voice is a change up that I really enjoy. Um, so needless to say, I'm stoked to have you back on and, uh, you know, you're, you're much more well-versed in the ATV motocross world and in my life in general than you were, uh, the first time around. So I'm excited for the conversation. Yeah. And I do, I really appreciate everyone that had kind words to say, even just commenting on it, not even telling me that they liked it, but just kind words in general. You guys, I seriously appreciate that so much. That goes such a long way. So I thought that was cool of everyone who 
approached me or got to talk to me over the summer, even on social media, reached out um, and had really nice things to say. I do. I do appreciate you guys. Yeah. Well, I, I remember uh, talking to you and telling you there's going to be people that talk to you or feel like they know you before you ever, yeah. got to, before you ever even got to the racetrack. Yes. Right. So that actually oh. did, did, did come to fruition. Um <laughs> where yeah like people talk to you like they knew you kind of knew your story knew some of your vibes and your views and stuff so uh that was really cool and i do do think that it showcased um you know the the togetherness and the the um warmth of the atv community i feel like yeah yeah i I won't disagree with that at all okay so uh you know you had already at the beginning of the season, you had told me that this was something you wanted to do. You wanted to come back on the podcast to talk about 20, to to talk about 2020 a little bit. Um, you know, and I didn't plan this, but I realized it while I was prepping for this episode. Uh, this is episode 42. And after winning the three palms, Texas national in September and clinching back to back 25 plus national championships, I now have 42 national wins to my name. So it's kind of fitting. And of course it was special to, to have you be a major part of this, uh, this, you know, most recent chapter of my ATV racing career. Yeah. I, I honestly am so honored that I got to be a part of it get to come talk on here again. And, uh, that you decided to keep me around for the duration of that whole year. So that's the most exciting part. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So, uh, first thing, first, <laughs> don't even know how to respond to that, but, uh, so, so first things first, uh, talking about the 2020 season, did you enjoy spending the summer at the races? Yeah, of course I did. Okay. And uh, yeah, I had a ton of fun. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but when I think of summer, I think of standing under the scorching sun, sweating, while you're trying to look cute with the impossibility of looking cute that nothing beats that. Well, <laughs> your, your summer, your summers up to this point yeah. were spent at the beach and on the water. I feel like in the beach race slash lakes guys, just for the, right. And, 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 uh, the, uh, the racetrack is a little different vibe than that, but, um, you know, you it always, is. you know, a year ago at this time, it was like, you know, I knew you were going to fit in You're a, you're social <laughs> and, and, you know, you're going to make fun. You're going to make it be fun and all that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, you never know how it's going to, how it's going to feel. And it's like, you just fell right yeah. into place, you know, right away. Like, uh, like you had, uh, you had been there your whole life. I feel like. Oh, well, I don't, I don't, when I look at it or think back to the whole season, I really don't feel like there was any like adjusting or anything that kind of blindsided me, but I do, I do pride myself in being able to, I don't want to say be flexible, but kind of mold into what I'm doing, you know, Mm -hmm. to not have expectations so that you just kind of go into it open-minded and can kind of just take everything in stride and enjoy it. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely did do that. Yeah, it was a fun ride. And, and I'll never forget, you know, uh, how pumped you were when I saw you for the first time after some of those wins this season. I mean, I'm talking, <laughs> I'm talking screaming and jumping and Tiger Woods swings. And, uh, you know, it was, <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, I, uh, you know, specifically at, uh, at, um, must have been Illinois at Sunset Ridge yeah. and kind of, you know, we don't get uh, this season. We didn't get the the podium celebrations because of COVID. So, you, you know, we didn't get to experience that, obviously, but you um, being so pumped, kind of rounding the the corner, you know, after getting off the track, they're seeing you and, and, and my dad. And it was like, you know, it was like jubilation, you know, you jumping up and down <laughs> and, and seeing that emotion, I guess, um, was something that made it special for me, even though we didn't have the podium celebrations, which is something that you always really look forward to, but seeing your emotion, uh, is something that, uh, you know, that, that made it special for me, I guess. I remember that exact moment so vividly because I was so excited that I like, couldn't think of what I was doing, what was going on. And for anyone who watched this happen, I don't even know. Happy birthday, I guess, because I, I don't know, but I had tried to jump over that like plastic string of flags. Yeah. And mind you, this was like in, a in 16th of an inch off the ground. Like it was in not sta- high. In staging. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I tried to hop that because I was going to like run to you because I was so excited and I was like, just all pumped up in my 
foot did not make it over that little string and I took it like across the ankle and I almost <laughs> face planted like a toddler and uh, I just to remember being so excited mm -hmm. that I didn't even care that a crowd of people just watched all of that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny. And then the other one that, that, uh, you know, comes to mind is in Virginia. And I remember, you know, passing the finish line and like you got off the track right after passing the finish line. And I remember like looking up because the racetrack was actually lower than where you guys were standing, where you were standing. And I just remember you being like doing the stereotypical, like, yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, and, and yeah, that was that uh, again, those are two images, two memories that I'll never forget. So, um, to Why see somebody go ahead. Why is it that when I'm excited, I go to a death metal screen? <laughs> well, it, it's the, the special part is that it's something that, you know, me, when it's something that you're so passionate about, but you see somebody else, you know, just as pumped, just as passionate, just yeah. as excited. I mean, oh, that's no, just, sure. <laughs> that's just such a good feeling to share that, you know? I, yeah. So, yeah. so, so if I was to ask you a uh, favorite memory of 2020 of the 2020 season, uh, did we just talk about them or would it be something else? My favorite moment yeah. of like the, the whole entire season or, or memory, you know? Yeah. You know, it's hard to pick one when you got to hang out with a lot of different dogs. <laughs> oh yeah. You, so. you do love the dogs. <laughs> For anybody who let me say hi to pet, be around your dog at the racetrack. You're the real MVPs. I appreciate only, all of you. Only you would have turned this into oh. a dog talk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like that just, oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy talking to other people too, but the dogs are really where my heart was at. There was one point where someone asked where a specific trailer was and you're like, I don't know, babe, did you see where that Jack Russell was? And I was able to tell that person exactly how to get to that trailer. Uh. So that was, but um, no, my yeah backtracking I really really appreciate everyone for allowing me to do that and say hi because I know that those are that's your family and those are your kids so um but uh my favorite memory and I feel like this is probably super stereotypical so whatever I guess look past that but um your last win of the season where you wrapped it up um because I mean there is that there, there's that intensity. I mean, it's a good intensity, but just that like sigh of relief, like it, there's no more wondering what's going to happen because you know, what's going to happen. You're going to win like that. Mm -hmm. That was my favorite moment. Um, and to see that emotion take you over just that, I don't know, that wrap up that pride, that, um, seeing all of your hard work pay off, you know, just that, yeah. The, the moment of success, seeing how you felt during it was probably my favorite. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It was a, it's a little anticlimactic. I feel like, uh, at the end, just because of the way that the race has played out. Yeah, um, that's and, fair. Then, and then, you know, we kind of wrapped it up after the first moto. So it was like, uh, you still, I was still focused. I still wanted to win the next day, win another overall and everything. But, uh, yeah, we, we wrapped it up after the first moto. So I was kind of thinking that too. I had no idea where you were going to go with that answer. <laughs> Uh, I would have had, I would have probably picked the the same thing. I mean, just, you know, and it's, it's cool. Um, I thought the Texas track was a really good track. I thought that, yeah I, did too. Uh, yeah, I thought that that was three palms was really awesome. We had a great experience down there. That was a lot of fun. And then, you know, to do it, obviously in back-to-back -back seasons, uh, we were only one of a handful of people that went back to back. Uh, that's something that I pride myself in too, for sure. So um, we, I touched on the tracks there for a second. Uh, what about if I asked you uh, if you had a favorite track that we went to? and why oof so I feel like that's such a it's an interesting question um and I don't because mean it, that because positively or negatively but because it could I, be it could be uh for a reasoning in the place of the country it is the the vibes there you know whatever I don't care which I don't care why you decide wow. on that track if we're going to go country placement, I'm going to say the closest, but that's the one because the furthest was a 24 hour ride for us. Right. Um, but um, that, ha that happens when you're from Wisconsin. I don't know. I feel, I do feel like Georgia was probably my favorite because it was the very 
first race that I got to watch. So um, that just kind of made it more special because it was the first. Um, also because being new, I had no freaking clue what I was doing. And I don't, you will you can correct me on this, but I think they must have like mixed up your number and the number that was supposed to be behind you and they dropped them first. Um, and so I was standing next to one of your friends who I didn't know as well now, obviously, as I, um, or didn't know mm -hmm. them as well then as I do now. Yep. Um, and I thought that your class had dropped and I didn't see you come around that first corner. And uh, I caused a panic attack in myself and him until we realized that it wasn't even your class. And he was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, so I think about that and laugh too, just because it's, I'm the learning curve is fun. It's funny too. Yeah, because... yeah. I can't remember what, I can't remember what happened there. If they, if they, yeah, just gated, I think it was at a double gate and then the class, maybe uh, the other class went before remember. us, I think at that first race yeah. right there. Um, but there was that moment, a moment of panic when you did not come around <laughs> with the group of people. Right. Um, so yeah, there was that, I just, yeah. I mean, it was, but I feel like it was so cool because it took no time at all. And, you know, you were using the motocross lingo, you were talking intelligently about everything. Um, so that was really cool. Cause it was funny. Cause I'd think back on like something you just said or a conversation we just had or whatever. And I'm like, damn, like she's doing good. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, that was cool. Um, so it didn't take you very long to get acclimated you know, I always, I like the, the local tracks too. You know, I love, uh, I love Walnut because those guys down there at Sunset Ridge are so great. I like that track. It's close to home. You know, Redbud's my favorite track, uh, in the country. I love it there. Um, little bad luck there this year, but you know, uh, you know, I just thought it was cool. It was a cool, uh, to have a different, um, schedule this year. You know, we went to tracks that we had never been to before. We hadn't been to, um, you know, Lake Sugar Tree. I hadn't been to Three Palms before. It had been years since we had been at at Aonia Pass in Georgia. Um, you know, years, I mean, a decade since we were at Pleasure Valley. So uh, that was a lot of fun. It was cool to go to some different tracks, but uh, looking forward to getting back to some of the tracks that are kind of the staples too. You know, the Loretta Lynn's will be cool to have back on the on the schedule and it'll be good for the series to go back to Unadilla, New York. I mean, that's a, that's a favorite of so many people. So um so yeah, yeah, anyways, but uh, yeah. I'm good. sitting here nodding my head like I know all these tracks when all I know is the, the year name. of the pandemic. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, that's funny. Okay, so if you could change one thing about the sport, um, you know, about our year, about the sport as a whole, uh, whatever you want to talk about here, what would it be? Eek. Um, I feel so underprepared for this question because I don't, I don't know that that is anything that I've ever okay. thought about. Um, cheese and rice. Can I, I, can I, can I bring up the fact that I, uh, don't support the hybrid movement? Oh, twist my arm. You absolutely can. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, that that's oh, oh that's, you want to get me started on this. <laughs> oh well you know enough now. Um yes, I do. just just being that, you know, and, and it's this is something I was real I've always been passionate about, but a few years ago I felt like I had to bang the table a little harder for it because the series was going more hybrid. Well, in the last year or two, especially I feel like as we transition into 2021, I mean the series is becoming more uh, OEM friendly, more production based. I mean, there's more and more and more Yamahas. We're seeing all these Yamahas, all these, uh, the invasion of Yamaha into the pro class with, you know, with, um, Joel Hedrick moving to Yamaha with Bryce Ford, moving to Yamaha, all that stuff. I love to see the fact that we're supporting the brand that supports our sport most, but you know, a few years ago, it was, it was becoming more hybrid stuff. And the reason, I mean, if you're new to listening to me talk about the hybrid stuff, um, you know, I don't support the hybrid movement solely because I feel like you have to spend more money to be competitive if you're, um, you know, having to build a hybrid or to build a hybrid to have to be competitive in your class. I mean, I think that, you know, there are machines out there that maybe have, you know, an upper hand, um, 
if you know you have some you know pristine hybrid but i feel like it's it's more rider than anything else but that would be the only thing that i would change about the sport but i will put a caveat there that i do believe the sport here in the last two or three years is now changing back to being more production based being your uh more production and OEM friendly. And I just love to see this Yamaha takeover. So that's what I thought you were going to say, because we've had some of these discussions and I knew it was something that you kind of wanted to highlight on the show here when you had brought it up to me, you know, in the middle of the season saying, Hey, why are people doing that? Why do people do that? What, what do you mean they have to buy a dirt bike, take the motor out and then put it in a, put it in a four wheeler. Um, so I knew that that was something on your radar and that's where I expected you to go. Yeah, I you know, honestly like I feel like it's been I don't want to say so long, but long enough that I've almost like blocked it out because there were so many good things about the whole year that I kind of forgot about that to be honest. It does come down to rider and I don't I personally do not think that um money should be what is the ultimate mm, at the end of the year um <laughs> Yeah, you know, the teeter totter of who wins and who loses, it shouldn't right. be based on money. It should really be, you should all be on even, you know, an even playing field given tools. I mean, you work out hard and you train hard and you do all those things, um, but it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be about money. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly not, right. that's not competition then. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not and, what... and I don't, and I don't want to harp on it too much more. Um, but yes, you, you never, you want it to be the athlete and the rider and stuff you know, yes. but, which is why I like the fact that we're getting back to being more, uh, non hybrid, you know, uh, because I yeah. feel like it's more of an even playing field. That's all I, that's the only well, reason it, why that's the only reason why I ever it, lobbied for that is because you just want an even playing field so that somebody can't, yeah, um, you know, create an advantage that, that another person doesn't have. I feel like if you want it to be a competitive sport, then it should be about the player, not their tool. Let me spin it in this way. Then can you understand why okay. uh, can, do you understand why I love the sport as much as I do, um, you know, kind of referencing the family atmosphere, the togetherness that the sport is, um, you know, cause I feel like there's so many people that love that. Uh, again, the fact that ATV racing is a family, um, is that something that you noticed and enjoyed? Um, Yes. I feel like it's hard to, man, that's like, it's hard to judge that question during a pandemic when that's all I know is like, you know, keeping our distance and wearing masks and that's not true. shaking hands and stuff like that. Like it, obviously the, this year has been super weird for everybody. We're again, we're taking, you know, taking it all in stride and doing what we can, but um, yes, I can. I do feel like, you know, you you were born with this in your blood. So you loving it isn't just about like what it is today, but the history that it has for you and with you and how it has truly molded you into you today. So I look at all that kind of stuff and I 110% understand why you feel the way you do today. I get it. Now you went from, you know, being somebody with very little experience in the sport to being somebody who, <laughs> you know, is fully entrenched. What stood by me while it was my whole life, my, you know, every day from sun up to sundown job, basically between all the <laughs> stuff I do, uh, involving the sport. So that's why I wanted to get your opinion there. Um, and the other thing, and I kind of touched on this before, but I mean, the other thing that I love so much about it is, you know, I love the prep work. I like working in the shop. I like working with my sponsors. I like writing about the sport. I like doing all the PR stuff with my sponsors. Um, I like the fact of loading up your race program, traveling the country with it and, uh, in competing. I like that you know, I like to be able to compete, um, you know, and try to take your best and, you know, put it up against, uh, your competitor. I just, I like that about the sport. Um, I love that concept and that's really what I live for. I feel. I agree. And, and I also, uh, I love loving it. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, you know, in my professional career, I let the grind get to me. Um, so scaling things back and getting back to, you know, the grassroots of the sport, doing it for fun. I'm just so happy that I got, uh, 
you know, to the point, um, instead of simply walking away, uh, you know, when I retired from doing it professionally, I'm so glad that I got to enjoy, you know, uh, my true love for it again, like I had when I was a kid. Um, you know, that's probably again, like why it's so special to me again, when at one point I felt like I fell out of love with it. Um, you know, I just, you know, I put that emphasis on, uh, on having fun again. And I say that on a lot of these shows, but I feel like that's something that I wish I could have had somebody tell me, you know, um, in the midst of my pro career. And I'm just, you know, that's why I, I love this thing, uh, so damn much. And I'm happy that, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, that you, you, you share some of those feelings now. I mean, that's a special feeling for me. (laughs) Speechless. Um, okay. So, you know, I guess I referenced my professional career a little bit, uh, speaking of the AMA to be pro class, it's been fun because we cover the racing here on the show, obviously. Uh, but you don't always listen to the episodes and you do that for a particular, you do that for a particular reason. So, uh, tell me, tell me about that. Why I don't listen to your podcast. Well, you know, because you don't, I mean, I'll tell people you want to be able to talk to me about racing. So you don't want your yes. questions that you would ask me answered by simply listening, you know, to the podcast. You want to be able to ask well, them to me and have you ex- have me explain it to you. Am I right? Okay. So yes and no, like you're not wrong, but that's not like the whole reason. Okay. Um, so I, okay. This may be this might go back to the last episode we did about love languages. You know, you love someone, how you need them to be loved. I work a job that I don't care to bring home with me. Um, don't get me wrong. I love what I do. I love everything about it. But in order for me to maintain a job like that, a career like that, I need to be able to clear my head and not bring home my work. So I try to give you that same respect. And I mean, you talk about things that are fresh on your mind. So if I would listen to a podcast, you know, on my hour drive over to 45 minutes, um, that's going to be front of my brain. And I'm, that's what we're going to talk about. And I don't want to bring your work home for you and be that, you know, like that's what we're talking about all the time. And if I have questions, yes, I want to be able to just talk with you about it because I would rather, um, I mean, I obviously enjoy our conversations clearly. Um, and I like getting a response versus listening to it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, I like you having some of your own things and me having some of my own things. I mean, we have so much together that this does not, I don't need to take this away from you and have it be something that I'm always on top of this way you get your space to do your thing. Right. But, Um, but, but, you know, it, you also don't want to spin it so that people think we don't talk racing because that's not the case. Oh yeah. We no, we do trust me, which is totally, no, we totally do, but it's not, we talk about other things that aren't your, like I air quote this work, Mm -hmm. um, because then it's more exciting to talk about. And if I were to listen to a podcast and ask you questions, it's probably going to feel like you're having that same conversation again, where if I don't, then I'm asking my own questions that I, you know, or am thinking up on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're more, gen- it's a more genuine conversation. Right. But, you know, to tie, I guess to tie that up, um, I feel like, you know, the fact that you don't listen to the podcasts, <laughs> so then maybe I wouldn't answer a potential question that you have. I like that because I feel like then when we converse about it, if you ask me something about, you know, so about a rider or you ask me something about what happened or you ask me about the podcast that, you know, we recorded or dropped or whatever. I like that because I, I, I think it's a blast to be able to talk uh, with yeah. you about something that I love oh, yeah. so much, you know, Oh, 100. That's, yes. That's where I was going with all of that. Yes. So, and go ahead just after you have prepped and done all this work, um, I do, there is a, like a small part of me that would feel guilty where, you know, you turned your brain onto this for a couple days. I don't need to draw it out longer just because, you know, you know, I get it. I'm not, (laughs) I'm not trying to be that girlfriend, but, um, I obviously have always supported you. Don't, I don't want anyone to be like, oh my gosh, what a crappy girlfriend thing to do. Um, I support it. Believe me. I do. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't listen. 
well, I, it sounds I wasn't, so weird to say out loud, but right, right. But I is. wasn't, but it was the exact opposite. I know. Of, it was the opposite of me trying to put you on blast. It was me trying to, oh, I know, I know, talk, but talk about is reality. So talk about the communication and stuff like that, which I appreciate. And speaking of that, you, know, you had showed me some screenshots of, of listening, um, or I'm sorry, of listeners, you know, kind of praising you for some of the advice that you had given on the, on the last time uh, that we had you on. Um, and, yeah. you know, you know, kind of sing some praises of some of the messages uh, that you kind of had presented there. So tell me about that a little bit. Um, I, I, okay. So I did re-listen to our first podcast today um and I guess it was one of those things that I I'm so passionate about that kind of stuff and it probably goes back to a background in you know mental health but um I guess I didn't realize how in depth and just from my heart I was talking at that point about um you know supporting your partner and how to be the, you know, be what they needed versus what you needed and how, you know, you need to be more worried about their needs versus your needs and don't love them the way you need to be loved, but love them the way they need to be loved. Just all that kind of stuff. Um, but I feel like that, that's an everyday thing. That's not a race thing, but it does, it obviously shines through because that's your biggest, I mean, that's your biggest you thing. Um, so it's me, how can I do my, you know, love you in a way that will bring out your best version of you during the race season. So they just, um, and that person's not even a race person, actually. They just said, Hey, you know, I hadn't listened to that. I did for the first time and it really hit home. And I really appreciated some of the things you said. And I honestly kind of choked up because you just never realized you know, like sometimes you just need to hear something, you don't realize you need to hear it and it hits home and it's helpful. And if I did that for even one person, oh, my whole day is made that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. And and it's cool to every once in a while, be able to touch on some life things. I mean, it's not that, uh, (laughs) it's it's not that we need to talk racing every single second of this thing. Um, so yeah, I I think it was awesome. I wanted to be able to touch on that. And I guess it's a, it's a cool thought to think that you helped somebody and they valued your relationship advice. We'll get right back to the show, but now a word from our sponsors. And thank you for listening to these ads. Without these great companies, none of this would be possible. Show your support for the people who support us. Before Digging Deep was even a reality, back when it was just an idea, CST Tires already believed in us, which is fitting because no one believes in their tires more than I do. Our title sponsor, CST Tires, and their Pulse MXR tires continue to hook every rider strong enough and willing to grab a handful of throttle after mounting them on their ride. Used by Thomas Brown to win races and clinch a third straight Quad Cross of Nations title, Nick Janusa when he grabbed his first career pro class podium, and myself, Cody Jansen, as I rode my Pulse MXR fronts and white label soft compound rears to back to back national championships in the Junior 25 Plus class. The Pulse MXR tire, available in soft and standard compounds, offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. Visit csttires.com to join the CST takeover today or prepare to be beat by someone who did. CST Tires, where passion meets the ground. Anybody that I've gotten to try them, I've heard nothing but positive things back. We're proud to be Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. Why choose Yamaha? Look no further than Chad Wienan's seven championships in the past nine seasons aboard his Yamaha YFZ 450R. Not to mention Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing and their support of this podcast proves it. For the 2020 ATVMX season, Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program will offer payout and prize opportunities, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ 450R. For more information, head to yamahaoutdoors.com and follow them on social media at Yamaha Outdoors today. All hail Blue Crew, the number one OEM supporter of ATV racing. 
For over 150 years, Valvoline has led the charge by being dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, and for the better part of a decade, I've been fortunate enough to be part of the historically great Team Valvoline. From my commuting vehicles to small engines, race quads, and everything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline in all of my equipment. I've experienced increased function and durability as well as a longer life expectancy thanks to Valvoline's array of products and lubricants. Since 1866, Valvoline has been focused on bettering your experience, whether on road, on track, and everywhere in between. Upgrade to Valvoline today and check them out at Valvoline.com. SSI decals is a name synonymous with ATV racing, synonymous with big time success, and absolutely synonymous with the best looking decals around. An offshoot of their parent company that was established in 1947, SSI first took shape from owner Ian Harris's passion for ATVs. With what started as just making numbers and decals for riders like Chad Wienan, the company quickly took off. And today, you couldn't imagine ATV motocross without SSI decals. The graphics maker and designer now supports all the top teams in ATV motocross, as well as teams and riders racing GNCC, Work Series, Pro Motocross and Supercross, Canadian Pro Motocross, Short Course Off-Road Trucks, UTVs, Snowcross, and, oh yeah, six-time NHRA world champion Clay Milliken. No project is too big or too small for SSI decals, making your identity stick with championship level graphics. Head over to SSIDecals.com today and then maybe call the doctor because things are about to get sick. The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is brought to you in part by DID Racing Chain and their 520 ATV2 chain. This patented X-ring chain boasts a steel alloy construction for reduced weight, increased strength, and a longer overall chain life, making it the optimal ATV racing chain. Pick up an ATV2 chain today at your local dealer or wherever DID chains are sold. Don't forget about their motocross, off-road, and street bike chains as well. Wherever you go, go with DID. Hello listeners, this is Chad Wienan, AMA ATV Pro National Champion, an owner of Wienan Motorsports and proud partner of Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast. The two of us share a strong passion for ATV MX. Owning my own team gives us the ability to handpick the best products on the market for our racing program. With consistent testing, research, and development, we are confident that when choosing the products we believe in, our customers will be satisfied in building their own race program as well. We race what we sell. With brands like Fox Shocks, Walsh Racecraft, SSI Decals, Wrath Racing, and Henson Racing, just to mention a few, go to check out weenamortosports.com to see the full lineup. Enter discount promo code DIGDEEP at checkout. Enough talking already. Get out and get some fresh air and go ride. Hope to see you at the track soon. We are proud to be partnered with Numira Technologies. Since 2001, Numira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side market, covering more applications than anyone else in the industry. Numira's advanced piston technology uses a NASA-exclusive aluminum alloy that helps to reduce expansion rates, that allows for tighter tolerances, and leads to higher overall engine performance for your machine. For more information about Numira's wide offerings of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits, visit your local dealer or online at www.numira.com. Numira Technologies, pistons with an attitude. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV Components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, all the way down to suspension parts and bearing kits, Bronco is your hard part source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world, visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. The Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast is also sponsored by DP Brakes, a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology. DP has been dominating the ATV world for decades by supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. 2020 is no different, with an impressive lineup including Joel Hedrick and Phoenix Racing Honda Team, Cody Jansen and his Junior 25 Plus National Championship, Baldwin Motorsports, Nick Januza, Wesley Wolf, and much more in the ATV motocross. In GNCC Racing, DP has 16 of the top 17 pros heading into 2020. This includes the champ Walker Fowler, Bryson Neal, Chris Borich, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure, Adam McGill, and more. These riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on the top of the podium. Available at www.dp-brakes.com. 
Purchase at your local dealer or message us for the contact info today. What are you waiting for? Join the best ATV riders in the world on DP Brakes. Four Works Carbon's innovative lightweight products include top-notch seat covers, carbon fiber, and plastic hoods, gas tank covers, exhaust shields, shock guards, and much more. Whether you have an ATV, UTV, or snowmobile, Four Works has the goodies that will improve your ride and make you salivate. We trust Four Works for increased function and a sexier look, and you should too. Four Works Carbon, always working hard to bring high quality and innovative parts to the market. Check them out today at fwcarbon.com. Just like the sport of ATV motocross as a whole, our Digging Deep community is brought together by the love for racing that we all share. Our sport is compiled of many great people and leading that charge is the Launderville family at Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. This racing owned family business is a steel and concrete supplier serving the entire United States. Launderville Steel is a full service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum and stainless steel products headlined by the 4130 chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for ATVs and UTVs, off-road truck racing, late model dirt and pro tractor pulling series, drag racing, and more. Launderville Steel loves their racing just as much as we do, but don't forget about their concrete division as well. With over 25 years of experience, the concrete division can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. Their central Midwest location enables LSE to easily serve customers across the United States. For a quote, additional info, answers to more of your questions, or to talk a little racing, head over to LaundervilleSteel.com or give them a call today. We are proud to be partnered with yet another racer-owned company. Thank you, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. We are proud to be partnered with Gripped Gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with a rider in mind and the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan-based family operation recognizes riders' desire to showcase their identity. Owner David Payne's love for eccentric colorways and crazy patterns shows in his product something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Grip's drive is to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. With comfort and quality as key motivators, the family affair is constantly working on the next more innovative and improved glove. Get a grip on life, join the Gripped movement, because no one wants a bland glove. Check them out today at grippedgloves.com, that's G-R-I-P-T gloves.com, and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. If you were to guess, on average, how many days people in the U.S. have to wait to see a doctor, what would you say? Americans have to wait around 29 days to see a doctor in major U.S. cities. And if you're dealing with a condition like erectile dysfunction, you want treatment ASAP. That's why our friends at Roman have spent years building a digital platform that can connect you with a licensed doctor in your state, all from the comfort of your home. Roman makes it convenient to get the treatment you need on your schedule. Just grab your phone or computer, complete a free online visit, and you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. If the doctor decides that treatment is right for you, Roman's Pharmacy can ship your medication to you with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have questions or want to adjust your treatment plan. With Roman, there are no commitments and you can cancel anytime. So if you're struggling with ED, go to GetRoman.com slash digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash digging for your free online visit and free two-day shipping. We are also proud of our partnership with Factory 43. Factory 43 was born in 2007, making Nerf bars for the Suzuki LTR, Honda TRX 450R, and Yamaha's YFZ 450. The brand soon added bumpers and grab bars and for years now has offered parts for all sport quads. The racer-owned company strives to offer a quality product that installs easy, looks good, and holds up over time. For 2020, Factory 43 is the aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing Team, providing riders like Joel Hetrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, Chris Borich, and Grayson Eller with the motocross and cross-country versions of their Evo Nerf Bar and MX-style front bumpers. Head over to factory43atv.com to see their full line of products, thanks to Factory 43. We are excited to dig deep with the support of Bikes, Trikes, and Quads, LLC. Celebrating their 10-year anniversary this May, the company was started by former racers selling three-wheeler parts out of a barn in upstate New York. Through hard work, accompanied by offering great service to their customers, BTQ LLC now has over 40,000 new and used parts in stock. But they haven't forgotten their roots, still offering used OEM parts for three-wheelers, dirt bikes, 
ATVs, and side-by-sides. Parts are in stock and ready to ship with delivery within three days, including free shipping on orders over $50. Use discount code ATVMX at www.btqllc.com for $10 off orders of $50 or more. We're grateful to have Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC digging deep with us. Support our industry's grassroots businesses. Thank you, BTQ LLC. The Decker Training Facility at County Line MX is now open. This premier motocross training compound is located in beautiful Fountain, Florida, about a 40-minute drive from Panama City Beach. Their rapidly growing facility consists of a pro-level national track, amateur and youth tracks, woods loop, and mountain bike trails. Everything you need to train comfortably all winter long is available on site, including private cabins, a full gym, RV hookups, bathhouses, garage, dump station, wash bays, and more. With accommodations for riders across the country and around the world, the Decker Training Facility will help you become the best rider you can be. Sign up for a group training session or a private lesson with nationally ranked pros. Train tougher, smarter, and harder this off-season at one of Florida's most luxurious facilities. For more information, go to DeckerTrainingFacility.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Decker Training Facility, your elite training experience. We are proud to be partnered with Avocado Green Mattresses. We all know that sleep and rest are an important part of any athlete's routine. Avocado's line of natural mattresses and pillows provide exactly the support you need to ensure you perform at your best while doing the best for the planet. The Avocado Mattress offers zoned back support with an internal support unit, meaning whether you are recovering from a hard day of riding or relaxing on a Sunday morning, you will be experiencing next level comfort. You can rest in peace knowing the components in your mattress and pillow are non-toxic, natural, and sustainably sourced. And getting your Avocado Green mattress could not be any easier. They offer a 100-night sleep trial, free shipping and return pickups, and a 25-year warranty. And if that wasn't enough, rest assured knowing they have 5-star ratings by verified customers including some of the Digging Deep staff. Step up your sleep game by visiting avocadomattress.com. Thanks for listening. And remember to support our partners. Now back to the show. Okay. So now I'm going to put you, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit with some, some rapid fire, quick style, quick answer (laughs) questions. You know, there's no reason to be nervous or anything. Uh, I'm just looking for your opinion here. Okay. Go. Okay. 2021 pro class champ is. Why would you do this to me? Oh my gosh. Okay. I, oh, okay. So this, this isn't fair because <laughs> I feel like, yes, I understand everything. Not obviously not as well as the next person, but I feel like I like know people now. And then I feel guilty saying who because, now, now you know how it feels when people come on the show and, or right. I get, or I get people that are like, Cody, you need to be more passionate. You need to have more hot takes when I'm just trying to keep the peace most of the time. Gee. Chad, we next. So he ties Gary Denton in 2021. Okay. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of people agree. And there's going to be a lot of change with, you know, Joel's riding a Yamaha now. So who knows if he, yeah, you know, that's true. If, if he uh, picks up where he left off, we know he's going to be fast. We know he's going to win races, but is there an adjustment period? Same with Bryce Ford. So uh, I, yep. I was be, just going to say that too. Yep, It's going to be very interesting. Uh, hey, Max is, uh, is he racing pro next year? He is. And he was going to be my next question for you ah. because I know you're a little partial, you know, you've, you've became friends yes. with that family with his, with his mom. and. Yes. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, so Max will obviously come in as the pro rookie of the year favorite after, you know, dominating yeah. pro-am, pro-am this past year. Uh, so where will he finish in points at the end of the season? Okay. Let me put it this I, way. Let me put it this way. Do you see him being a top five guy? Yes. Ooh, hot take. Okay. I think that he is going to just completely knock everyone's socks off i i truly so you're you're saying he's going to be more impressive than people expect well first of all i have no idea what people are expecting um but i do know i when you're younger you just don't have as many years under your belt so yes that right there makes people expect um a 
something that they, you know, different than they would expect from someone who's got, you know, decades under their belt. Mm -hmm. So I think that as someone who is young and newer, I really genuinely have that gut feeling that he's just going to come in and everyone's going to be like, what just happened? Well, like, like we kind of saw with Bryce. I mean, we knew Bryce was going to be good, but I think he, I I think that he's going to, I do think that Bryce is also going to continue his streak of that happening. Ascent. Like, I think that's just going to keep going, getting better. Okay. Well, yeah. Then oh, yeah. That, that was our, that was my next question. Uh, mm-hmm. does, does Bryce Ford win a race in 2021? He's got one podium. No, he's got two podiums. He's got two podiums to his name. Does he get a win next season? Can I, I, I say yes. I say I, yes. My, what I was going to say was, I want that for him. Okay. But I don't, I almost don't want to answer it as to like my Simpsons prediction of what 2021 is going to bring. Um, because I don't want to jinx him. Okay. But I want that for him. If we'll just leave it at that. Next question. Grab fire. Let's go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if I told you that you had to bet on a wild card. Someone, oh, okay. someone who is going to take a leap forward in 2021. A rider you have not named yet. Alan Myers, next. Wow. Really? You, I mean, he was, you're he, really surprised. Well, he, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think you were going to rapid fire that one, but yes, I agree. I mean, I think he's going to be a guy that could take a step forward. I would also, I mean, depending on what you think, you know, uh, how a wild card works, uh, Brandon Hogue is going to be good. He's going to, he's going to yeah. improve a ton, you know, standings wise. Cause he got hurt obviously, but at mm-hmm. the beginning of, at the beginning of the season, he was a, a contender. So, uh, what about, I thought maybe you were going to reference Jeffrey. Cause I know you're kind of a Jeffrey fan, but I already think of him as good. So I don't, I don't oh, okay. know. That's all right. All right. All I, right. in my it, mind, he's, I have him up in top five already. Okay. Sure. Um, sure. So um, I feel like that's not fair to take him as a wild card. Then a- Alan was going to be our most improved pro this last year. And just, uh, Wes went on a streak at the end of the year where yep. he was doing really well and Alan suffered some tough luck or, or he might've been our ding deep, most improved pro award winner. Yeah. So yeah. you and I had a, I mean, you and I enjoyed watching Alan improve too. Okay. Something people may not know about me or digging deep, but should. Okay. Cody steals my snacks. Cody does the steel snacks. <laughs> um, so I feel like this is one of those like funny things that no one would ever know. And it's yeah, honestly yeah, I mean, so irrelevant to anything, but I also think it's endearing slash I want to strangle you for it. Um, so I have like a secret snack bin of things that are like 100% not good for you, which include, but are not limited to pop tart bites, which are freaking amazing. Um, and if you've not tried them, the like birthday cake confetti one is top tier. Anyways, um, Cody will disappear for a second and I will hear the rustling of different unhealthy food bags and I'll ask what he's doing and I'll get a nothing. And he is most definitely not doing nothing. He is treating himself because he eats so healthy on a day-to-day basis that this is his treat time. I don't even know how to say it. Yeah. I mean, I pro I probably had just got done running (laughs) eight miles or, you know, God forbid you mention how (laughs) hard Cody works at the podcast (laughs) or, or whatever, how hard he trains, but no, we, you know, I, I roll out the red carpet for you to say something nice and Cody steals my treats. Oh, you went fishing and nothing bit. I'm so sorry. (laughs) No, I'm, um, just, I'm just kidding. no you something that people don't know I feel like we touched on this on the first one because I definitely heard um, it get mentioned when I was listening today but um I think what people don't understand is that one it takes you so much time and hard work to drop a I mean a podcast um just a episode um Uh, Yes. I almost said channel. Sorry. Um, (laughs) And like, they also don't understand that, like, there are things that need to not be said. 
because they're ugly and they're messy and they're not, they're not going to have a good ending. Well, I just, I simply, I I simply always try to put a spot positive (laughs) spin on things. Yeah. So when people are like urging you to say, but that's with everything in my life. That's fair. I always try to spin it in a positive way. That's just me. That's just me. Right. It's not, it's not being fake. That's what I'm just, I'm just trying to Mm. make sure everybody knows it's not being fake. It's that that's just how I live my life. I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. That's plain and simple. When I want to be mad or angry and you're like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm." (laughs) but no, I, I, what I was really trying to like get on uh, with that rant was just like, Hey, you know, like I, I need you to understand that that's not cool. That's not good. That's not what you strive for. That's not who you are. So please stop getting super upset and saying things that are like a little less than positive on social media when they don't get their way over you not having those conversations. You do everything with a purpose. So everything you don't do also has a purpose, whether someone knows it or not, it's truly not really anyone's privilege to know why you're not saying something. So just let it go and move on to the next happy thing that you have to talk about. So that's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. Well, and I love that. I love that people are passionate about things. We don't get, I mean, we don't get negative comments. Like we don't really get that. It's more the less, uh, just, why don't you have this person? Why don't you talk about that? That's all. That, that's, that all. Kind of thing. that's all. Yeah. And yes, there are, there are some things that I'm just try not to touch on because I'm always trying to be positive. And I mean, every sport, everything, every person, every, everything in life has, you know, dirty laundry, right? Like stuff that doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be said or exposed. And I mean, there isn't another podcast like mine. So what we're trying to do is create a great image for the sport. We're trying to create, you know, this positive image. And the last thing I'm going to do is come on here and blow people out or, or blow the sport out in general. That's just, that's not, that's not me. And that's not like the objective of any of this. Right. No. So, um, so yeah, yeah, that's here. I am like really like pushing this hard and putting my foot down and then you're just so gentle and kind with your words. Well, it's true though. I mean, that's, that's my feeling. It's not neglecting anything. It's just, uh, no, no, no. I never, have to, right. We have to pick our spots and do the right thing so that it's a, it's a good, good exposure for the sport at all times. Yes. Um, okay. So let's get into, um, some of our listener questions and then I'll kind of give you the floor in case, um, there was anything that you wanted to touch on just to finish up. Okay. So Josh Klein asked what, has been the scariest moment while watching Cody race? <laughs> um, the, honestly, there really wasn't, I don't know that I would say there's any scary moments because you didn't, you didn't get I, hurt this year. Um, I, I crashed in Texas. Right. Okay. So I'll just say that was the scariest moment because you were leading and then all of a sudden you weren't leading and I couldn't see you, didn't know where you were. You came around and the whole side of your thigh and a little on your back was dirty. Um, and I, I mean, it was just that you didn't come around the corner when you should have. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was that moment of like, where is he? But right. it wasn't even 10 seconds later and you were right there. So my moment of panic did not last long. Um, honestly, the scariest moment though of the it was, season. It was, it was. And to my credit, it was longer than 10 seconds. Cause I had to work my tail off to get back up front, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, go ahead. Um, the scariest moment of the whole season was in Georgia when Jeffrey decided to slingshot himself into the chain link fence mm-hmm. because my mind immediately went to like, what would I do if that was you? So my heart went out to Nikki and I was like, I almost like cried for her because it just was that scary moment of you don't know what happened or like what's going to be the result of what happened. And it's just that unknown moment. Um, and obviously when you are, you, you feel for someone else that it's you, whatever, carry that emotion then um, well, even to, when it's not yours to carry. So. And to give, to give the story a little context, I mean, Jeffrey, and Nikki had spent an hour with us the day before. So you were like, you, you know, 
this was the I, very I this was the, this was the very first race. So yes, like yeah. you're already partial to Jeffrey. You're following Jeffrey, you know, on the racetrack, and then we see him cartwheel into that fence, and uh, yeah, that was not good. Yeet. Yeah, that was I. Yes, so that to me that was probably the scariest moment of the whole season, uh, because my heart hurt for both of them mm-hmm. in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, um, Sawyer Kostelik wants to know our top five for Supercross season opener next weekend. Uh, and I'll say, um, I've been, I've been a diehard (laughs) Chad Reed fan my entire life. Um, so it's going to be weird to, you know, see the races going on without my guy out there. Um, if you just want me to, t- if you want me to be the, the, the guy talking about the Supercross, you know, I'm a big Marvin Muskan fan. I think he's going to yep. be impressive. Um, I think Kenny Roxon starts the year off. Oh, yeah. He always seems to, I think AC Adamson Cirillo is going to win races this season. Um, you know, Osborne ended the season with a win. I think that he's surely going to be in the mix. Tomac obviously as well. That goes without saying, <laughs> Uh, um, he's, uh, you know, the, obviously the reigning champ, um, you know, coming in, uh, okay. com- coming in with the number one, I think same with Webb. Um, I think the rookie mm-hmm. chase Sexton will be good. Barsh is going to be good now that he's on a, a gas yeah. gas. I think he's going to turn some heads. Um, he always seems to start the season off strong and you know, the, the field is so stacked. That's what's exciting is, uh, it's hard to know where these guys are going to be. I mean, Mookie, I haven't, I haven't mentioned him. Um, uh, you haven't mentioned Ferrandis either. And I'm like, low key. Well, yeah. I was going to, I was going <laughs> to say that. I was going to say that, that, uh, you know, you're a Ferrandis fan as am I, he's a rookie mm-hmm. moving up to the 450 class. And, but I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be better than rookies typically are. I mean, he's a seasoned veteran, even though he was in the, in the lights class, you know, coming from Europe and stuff. So, um, he's going to be good. Uh, I don't even have to ask you because you're basically everybody, but Austin Forkner, so, so oh, uh yeah, who are you <laughs> i'll simplify the question here because i didn't even give a top five but i i gave maybe a little overview who are you pulling for if i you know we know you're pulling for ferrandis he broke his hand but he is going to be at the first race i uh, just don't know if you'll be totally up to snuff who are you pulling for um i don't know that i like necessarily have someone in particular that i am cheering for for like one more than others um I don't know I just I think the real question that we all want to know is will Forkner get back with the girl that is clearly out of his league (laughs) okay that's where we're gonna end it (laughs) yeah that's that's a whole nother topic and it's in itself we've heard some of that on pulp and stuff so uh yeah whole nother subject but you're right (laughs) you're right She's out of his league. Um, okay. Speaking of sports outside of ATV motocross, Chris wants to know why I'm such a Packers fan. Because they're the Packers. Next. Well, well be, yeah, I mean, yes, <laughs> but we also live in the shadow of Lambeau field and Look, quite- what people, what people probably across the country or the world can't relate to is the green Bay Packers. When you grow up in Northeastern Wisconsin, you grow up like being a, a entrenched, Packer, being a Packer, being a Packer fan. Like that's a, that's a huge thing here. It's just a way of life. You, uh, yes. Um, it's something that I don't think anyone will understand unless they're here and living in it. Um, but there are so many people from different States who have said, like, I know that it's different to beat a Packer game than any other sports game ever. Um, and that's on my bucket list of things to do before I die to just be in that emotion and to feel that way and be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's cool. I mean, uh, again, you know, most people don't understand. I think some, the way people, some people are passionate about maybe like a college sport or something mm-hmm. like that, where, you know, you live it. Like that's where you see some of that passion elsewhere. Well, in the NFL, it's not always the same, but for the green Bay Packers, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's a feeling, um, that's very college esque. And again, where we live, it's not, is not, it's not, if you're a Packer fan, it's, every single person here is a Packer fan. Like yeah, we, it's and, a, and, and, and again, like for people that maybe don't, culture. yeah, it's, it's a cult following. And, um, you know, for people that don't understand the Green Bay Packers also don't have an owner. They're owned by shareholders 
which I am one of them. And, uh, you know, they're literally owned by the County. They're owned by the community. So we, that's our team. Like that's, those are our guys. It's not just some rich owner up on a Hill overseeing an organization that he owns. That's not it. They're owned by the people. And, uh, so that's, that's some of it. And also like, you know, my, my grandparents grew up being a part of the organization and, uh, you know, supporting it throughout the years back when they had humble beginnings, you know, the, how the, the sport had, uh, the, the team had humble beginnings and stuff. So, um, yeah, we don't got to talk football talk cause I could go all day. Uh, I still, Honestly. I still have these visions of having a football podcast and it'd be awesome, but nobody would listen if, to it. Oh, here's another like fun fact about Cody that nobody knows. If Cody had to pick like one famous person in the world to spend an hour with or to interview or whatever, it would totally be Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. But everybody like, knows that if they follow me on Instagram, uh, I lied. So here's a fun fact that everyone already knows. <laughs> Cody loves Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I just love him as a person so much. I feel like he's got such a such a great personality. I love his uh, I love his California cool attitude. Uh, how how he he's just always says the right thing. I just I love everything about him. I like the way he talks. I mean, I just want to like emulate what he does. I feel like he's uh, he's a guy that uh, you could learn so much from. I like how he's intellectual and has opinions on things far outside of sports and stuff like that. So. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good topic there. But I feel again, like you relate to a lot that he talks about. So yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're friends, even though we're not friends, but we are. But that's how does, people feel about you listening he, to your podcast. <laughs> I've had people be like, oh my God, you sound just like you do on the show. It's funny, but Which uh, is weird. Cause I use my same voice. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Aaron and I are pretty tight. He just doesn't know it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Tom wants to know if you're interested in riding yet. <clears throat> and he notes that your one horsepower being a horse girl isn't enough. Um, I don't <laughs> stop. I don't, um, man, I, you want a pit bike. I do want a pit bike. I'm probably going to hurt myself on it because I have no idea what I'm doing, but I clearly have decent balance. So I just can't be a problem. I can't wait for pit bike races in the backyard. That's just what I'm, what I'm really looking forward to at this oh point. Oh my gosh. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, it's not that I'm against it. Um, I obviously just don't, I don't give myself like all the free time in the world. Um, and horses aren't exactly cheap. So I don't leave myself with like this, super full bank account to go buy a quad or whatever and just pick up that hobby and throw a ton of money into it um cough so, cough 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 yamaha okay <clears throat> i'm just kidding I'm, I'm totally kidding but unless yes. yamaha is going to <laughs> get into the horse world um they don't need to take care of me. it's a great plug for them yamaha outdoors check them out you were sent there by digging deep um so yeah Yep. So Shame what I meant to say, shameless plug. Oh, what I meant to say that you wanted a jet ski. To. You wanted a jet ski. It would need to be a Yamaha, but we could, we, we want to get you a dirt bike first or a little quad. I mean, that'd be cool. Very good. Okay. Moving on. I think, uh, I think that that's all we're going to do for listener questions on my end. I don't think that, uh, you gotten, you had gotten any that we didn't cover, um, or that you wanted to touch on, but I will give you, you. okay. There was a question and I know that when people hear this, their heads are going to snap around. Like, did she just say that? And the answer is yes. Okay. I did. This will be like our after dark version here <laughs> oh there's been there's been plenty of people that like pulp uh after dark they want digging deep after dark and i'm not about to turn this thing into dicking deep <laughs> oh my goodness but we would I, have a good we would have a good name oh we my. Go there, but we're not going there okay i'm like that spill it spill it brooke okay I feel like when I say this, people are going to be like, did she just say that? And the answer is yes. Can I read the comment? Can I read the, the suggestion? Because I know I where would you're be honored. 
I know where you're going. So um, this is from DBC Racing. And they say, let's talk about OnlyFans. Everyone low-key wants to hear about this, Cody. That, that, that. So first of all. Okay, and on that note. <laughs> and on that note, uh, is there anything that, that uh, we haven't touched on yet that you, you feel a, a burning need to talk about before we get out of here? I don't, I don't know that I can say that I do. Um, again, though, I genuinely appreciate everyone that talked to me during races, hung out with me. I mean, even at the banquet, just everyone who showed me kindness. I really, really appreciate you. Again, the people that let me pet and say hi to their dogs, you are also appreciated. Um, I just, I really got to meet a lot of genuinely good people this year. And I don't want a single one of them to think that the kindness I was shown was taken for granted because it really meant a lot to me. Um, and I, man, I really just appreciate good people. And I'm so grateful that I got to be surrounded by so many new good people. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, think I couldn't have said it any better myself. Listen, honey, no. Um, this has been a blast. Thanks so much for doing this with me. And thanks for being by my side throughout the, throughout another national championship winning season in 2020. They're, uh, obviously memories I'll cherish forever. So I can't thank you enough for, for all of it from today to the, you know, all the stuff throughout the season and, uh, everything in between. I just can't thank you so much. You are so welcome. So your game to come on again, maybe sometime. I mean, let's see how people like this one now. And if we get good feedback and they want to hear my voice again, I am happy to share it. Okay. So if you want to hear Brooke back on the show, be sure to let, uh, let us know, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we can plan on it. Cause it's always, uh, it's fun and it's, and it's nice. It's, it's refreshing to get, uh, you know, like I said, a woman's voice here, um, you know, on, uh, on, uh, the podcast and, uh, it's a good change up. It's perfect off season content. I feel like, so I, I really like it. Um, that's my girl, Brooke Catherine, who's brought to you by manscaped use code digging deep 20 for 20% off at manscaped.com. I love you, babe. Thanks so much again. I love you too. Also, I just want to add in here. Manscaped is amazing and it works great for you, but I don't use it because I don't have a beard. So when you say Brooke brought to you by Manscaped, I feel like. Okay. Oh here's, here's, here's the thing. They're amazing. I know their stuff works so good. You've had nothing but great things to say. So don't go there. Here's the thing. If you've listened to any of the Manscaped ads, they are not to trim your facial beard. And I'm going to leave it at that. It's called Manscaped for men's below the oh. waist grooming. Oh my gosh. Brought to you by Manscaped, Brooke Catherine. For nut bushes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Your balls will thank you. That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's literally the line that I read every week, but you would, you, you wouldn't know. Thanks, babe. Well, you know what? You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. For I love you. On. Bye. I think she's a natural. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Major thanks to tonight's guest, Brooke Catherine, for joining the show once again. Thanks to producer Dallas Jansen, my brother, who always finds time for us. Thanks to our sponsors, CST Tires, shop.csttires.com, Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, the Decker Training Facility, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Four Works Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Roman Health, Factory 43, Manscaped, and Bikes, Trikes, and Quads, LLC. Support the brands that support our show, and don't forget to use those codes to save. Find them on our website, and be sure to click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner to help us out. And most of all, thanks to you guys for listening. Our show merchandise, including Digging Deep shirts, hoodies, and more, are available with free shipping on our website today. And if you're looking for another easy way to help support our efforts, visit our website and click that Buy Me a Coffee button. This allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to help us out. Don't forget about our voicemail line. You can call us anytime at 920-569-3519 and follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional 
content and up to the minute updates this off season. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. You know the drill. Basically, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. All of our episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links and discount codes, our show merchandise, and more can all be found on our website, diggingdeepatvmx.com. So check that out today. Be a friend, tell a friend, please subscribe, rate, review. I believe as a podcaster, I'm required to say that, but it truly does go a long way in helping us out. This is the Digging Deep ATBMX podcast, and let us be the last to wish you and your family a very happy new year. And with that, for Brooke Catherine, Dallas Jansen, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen, thanks for listening to the number one podcast in ATB Racing, a million downloads and counting on the verge of two million. Until next time, thanks for joining us in digging deep with the stars of ATV Motocross. Those guys were hauling ass, for real. I remember watching Doug Gus, I don't know who it was, Steel City, running the same times Friday afternoon as James Stewart was on Sunday back then at Steel City. I, I would need to check this out. I, I, I'm dead serious. It was mental. I've never seen quads go that fast. It's not easy, Steve. It's not easy. <laughs> Listen, JB. I <laughs> no, don't want to hear. It's not easy. I don't want to hear. Quad leaders are freaking nice. You don't want two big red. What the? <laughs> like-